Hello and welcome to Sports Moles Football Shorts. I'm Barney Corkill. I'm here with our football editor, Matt Law. And it's the brand new season, Matt. We're here to discuss the, our predictions for week number one. You might have seen some of you that we've upgraded to video for this. You can still find us on all the usual podcast channels, but we're also now on YouTube, so you can subscribe to us on that. Uh, we couldn't do that before because Matt's hair didn't fit in the screen during lockdown. It was <laughs> a sight to behold, wasn't it, Matt? <laughs> no, you were just jealous, mate. You're jealous. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the first week, uh, first game week w- means a new week of predictions for us. It's won all. I won the European predictions last season and Matt won the post-lockdown Premier League predictions. Um, so all square going into this one and it promises to be a mammoth uh, season of predictions. Starting with game week one and there are only eight games in this game week because uh, the two Manchester clubs were in the latter stage of European football last season. So have a delayed start to the season as do Burnley and Aston Villa as their um, opponents. But the first game of the new season, Matt, is Fulham versus Arsenal. Um, a London derby to kick us off at Craven Cottage. Newly promoted Fulham, obviously. How do you see that one going? Yeah, it's a really interesting one, isn't it? London derby, obviously, to start off. And, uh, you know, Fulham, I'm so glad they're back at this level. You know, they're, they're a Premier League club, aren't they? The Craven Cottage is obviously a fantastic ground. And, you know, uh, a team that obviously will be keen to do a lot better than they did last time. When they finished 19th in they last season, they only won seven games when they were last at this level and really struggled, spent a lot of money and just never really managed to sort of get any form of consistency, did they? It was always struggling, players that weren't performing. This season, they've done things a little bit differently. This summer, sorry, I should say, in terms of, you know, not spending loads and loads of money, they're going with pretty much the same. Obviously, they've made a few signings. Ariola in goal is obviously a great signing from mm. uh, French International and he, he should play in this game. But apart from that, you know, you can look Mitrovic, players like that to come come to the forefront. Obviously, Arsenal are going to be very interesting as well. You know, Willian, players like that, Bamiyang, obviously, it, he's still there. It, uh, obviously, a huge player for them. Managed to, to keep him so far and it looks like he's signing, obviously, his new contracts and stuff to stay there for the long term. So, it's, it's a really interesting one. It's one of those games that you could see it going... Could you see a draw? And, you know, I think you'll speak about it. I were reading it in your pre, uh, previews about the Arsenal. Obviously, that'd be their main thing this season, one, turning turning draws into wins. Mm. Uh, but I've just gone Arsenal here. I just You just look at their team. Obviously, Sabayas coming back in. Obviously, there'll be some changes at the back. Just a little little bit more solid. And Fulham, I, I just think they might struggle in the first game. So, I've just gone 2-1 Arsenal here. Yeah, I've also gone for an Arsenal win. I've gone for 3-1. I think Arsenal fans will be considering this a fairly kind start to life back into uh, back in the Premier League. You mentioned Fulham haven't really strengthened because the biggest signings have been turning loan deals into permanent deals. Yeah. Um, Ariola, I think, uh, last night came in. I think that's a great signing for them to get someone of that pedigree. Yeah, it's a real coup for them and could make a big difference over the course of the season. But I think Arsenal will be seeing this one as a, a, a nice start to the campaign, especially considering how they ended last season and... The community shield as well will give them great confidence beating Liverpool in that. Obviously, that's only maybe a semi-competitive game, so can't read too much into that. But when you go back to last season as well, beating Man City and Chelsea in the FA Cup, they're starting to beat the big teams and that will give them confidence of pushing. Um, obviously, they still need to beat these smaller teams like Fulham, but I, I'm backing them to do that. I'm backing them to win 3-1. So, both gone for Arsenal wins in the first game. Um, every game is televised this first weekend, so it's staggered kickoffs. 3 p.m. on Saturday is Crystal Palace versus Southampton. How do you see that one going, Matt? Yeah, this this is the one that I was, you know, doing the predictions. I was thinking I'm, I've gone a little bit, you know, a little bit rogue here to be honest. I've, I've predicted a two-two, and I'm thinking, looking back now, obviously Palace haven't scored a lot of goals. So there are goals in Southampton team. I just expect it to be open. You know, you're looking at two teams that obviously might Southampton maybe a four-four-two. You know, Ings possibly Adams up front as well. So there's a lot of you know, Southampton is an away side in the Premier League. They're fantastic, aren't they? The mm. game sticks out when they went to Old Trafford um, latter stage of last season and first half just played United off the park. You know, they've got some great players. Obviously, Will Prowse will be full of, full of beans when you have to play him for obviously getting get some games for England and Palace on the other hand got some in defensive injuries still. You know, they haven't really... This is obviously the strange situation of ideally you'd have the end of the season, wouldn't you? And then you'd have some pre-season games, a lot of pre-season games. You'd have a bit of time off to recover because of the quick turnaround, they've still got defensive problems, not been that much activity. Obviously, Zaha's still there, a lot of speculation. Not so much speculation recently, but obviously in previous ones. I'm just expecting an open game, to be honest. I've just got a feeling about a few goals here. So, yeah, 2-2. Two, two. I've gotten quite different on this one. I, I can see it being quite a tight game. Palace, just last season, really struggled for goals. And I don't think... I think Eberichi Easy is going to be a good player yeah, for good them. Player, in the, yeah. In the, yeah, he's, but whether he's going to... Enough to solve their... Uh, scoring problems, just him. They'll be expecting more from Zaha, obviously. He didn't have a great season last season. 
Um, and for me, it's not too much of a surprise. No one's really willing to meet his asking price when it's quite big. Um, but I, I just don't know if they've done enough to, to address those goals. And when, as you mentioned, Southampton last season was so good away from home. So I've just gone for them to, to edge this one 1-0. One um, so that's two away wins I've gone for so far. Um, Leeds versus Liverpool. So Liverpool versus Leeds at Anfield. Can't get much tougher for Leeds, can it, on the first first game back in the Premier League after 16 years. Liverpool, obviously, champions for the first time in 30 years going into this new season. It's champions versus champions, the winners of the, the top two divisions going head-to-head. Fascinating game, really. And to be honest, I can see it going a similar way to the first game of last season for Liverpool when um, Liverpool faced Norwich. And Norwich actually caused Liverpool some problems. Had plenty of shots on goal. Um, Liverpool ultimately ran out fairly comfortable winners. And I can see a similar story this uh, in this week, I think. Obviously, not comparing Leeds to Norwich. I think Leeds are much more prepared for the Premier League than Norwich were. But I can see Leeds causing Liverpool a few problems. But ultimately, you can't look past Liverpool's home home form. I think, what is it, since April 2017, since they last lost at home in the Premier League, which is incredible. Um, but Liverpool's defence hasn't looked that sturdy, certainly towards the end of last season, even in pre-season, hasn't looked that sturdy. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised to see Leeds score in this one, especially with Rodrigo they brought, and I think that's a great signing for them. Um, so I've gone for 3-1 to Liverpool in this one. I thought, yeah, I thought you was going to go sank really heavy there. I'll, I'll be honest, Barney, I, Liverpool this season, I'm not sure about them. You obviously know, <laughs> unless they sign someone else, you know, the squad is very difficult. I've said this before, to go again, isn't it? You, you start, you obviously, they did so well the season before, then they won the league, weren't great in the Champions League, had some poor results at the end of the season, and it is hard, isn't it, to go again and then again and then again. And do you think they'll win the league this season? I do, yeah. I don't think really? I don't think you can look past an eighteen point lead last season. I think obviously it'll be a lot closer. I think Man City will be a lot better, won't lose nine games this season. I think Chelsea are gonna be really good, but I think you just can't look past an eighteen point lead and you say it's hard to go again, but they have done it two seasons in a row now, ninety seven points, then ninety nine points. You you know, you can't really start doubting a team like that. It would be great to get another signing in. I think Thiago would be a, a great signing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, th- I think we'll win the league again this season. Yeah, I'll be, I'll, we can come back to this end of the season, but I'll be very, mm. very surprised if you could win the league this season. I'm just saying it, I would be really surprised just because I think everyone else can get a lot better. But in terms of this game, obviously I do expect Liverpool to win. I expect it to be tight. I've gone 2-1, but you know, like you mentioned, Leeds, Obviously, Ben White not being there now. They obviously wanted him mm. back, didn't they? He was so good in the championship last season, but they signed uh, Robin Koch, didn't they? Who a lot of clubs had looked at, and he obviously looked a fantastic player. And Rodrigo, as well, as you mentioned, just to get him in, sort of come from nowhere, didn't it, in terms of uh, the, the interest? And then they managed to get the deal done for a bit of money. Obviously, Valencia under pressure to to sell players, obviously, for financial reasons. But to get him in, obviously, Spain international who... Obviously, he has played in England before and he had that loan spell, didn't he, mm-hmm. uh, at Bolton, obviously, a long, long time ago now. He's obviously a different player. So, it's fantastic, you obviously, to see Leeds back at this level. You know, Obviously, they've been trying, haven't they, for a few years now. And it's a tough game, is this start. But like you say, I, I'm expecting Leeds to cause some real problems in this game. But, uh, yeah, I do expect Liverpool to win. I don't think they'll win the league, but I think they'll win this game 2-1. Yeah, I think on Leeds, I think I've predicted them to finish 11th in the final table. Yeah. I think they're, they're quite well equipped for the Premier League. Um, some teams just come up and look like Premier League teams, don't they? Like Wolves did a couple of seasons ago. I think Leeds are sort of in that bracket. Um, OK, moving on to Saturday 8pm is West Ham versus Newcastle. Intri- intriguing match this one. It's two clubs who, you know, there's there's a bit of unrest around them behind the scenes, the boardroom level. Newcastle obviously had these failed takeovers yesterday. The news came through that another one has been blocked by the Premier League. West Ham... Um, you know, it's pretty turbulent behind the scenes there. Mark Noble coming out on Twitter criticising the club's board for selling Grady Diangana. So, um, so it's it's a tough one to pick, isn't it? I think Newcastle have done some good business. I think their main problem again was goals from forwards last season. They brought in Callum Wilson and Brian Fraser, which should help with that. Um, West Ham, on the other hand, have only turned Thomas Suchek's deal into a permanent one, which is a good signing. But whether they've done enough to improve on last season, which was such a disappointing campaign, I'm not too sure about. And with all the sort of chaos going behind the scenes at the moment, I can see them getting off to a losing start here. Um, I've gone for 2-1 to Newcastle. Yeah, I've also got Newcastle here. It's interesting. Yeah, I didn't, it's, it's difficult, isn't it, to predict away wins on the first game. But like you say, West Ham's business, I agree with you about Suchet. I, I think he's a really good sign in the middle mm. of the park. But, you know, let's say letting Dean Gang go is... It's difficult, isn't it? Obviously, Mark Noble, you don't see that, do you, often, the player coming mm. out? Because it's not something he's done off the cuff. He's obviously had time to think about it and he's thought, you know, I'll have some of this. So I'll send out a message to, to the board and stuff. And that's that's not ideal, is it, the start of the season? 
Because Newcastle agree with what you're saying. Fraser's a good signing. Wilson's a good signing. Obviously, got Joe Lewis as well, didn't they? Liverpool, Liverpool had a little look at um, before they signed um, the Greece international, didn't they? Uh, you, you'll say his name Timikas. better than mine. Tim Yeah, they yeah. signed him in. They obviously had a look at Lewis. So good player for Norwich last season. And yeah, two of two of Bournemouth's probably two of Bournemouth's best four or five players. Probably better than that. two. Maybe two of Bournemouth's best three players. You know, in, in Fraser and Wilson. So. Very good signs. Obviously, Debravka being out is, is a big one for Newcastle because he's, he's a very good goalkeeper, probably among the best, you know, top top five, six in the league for me. So, uh, and St. Maximam, obviously, this season, is he's done fantastic, didn't he, last season? Obviously, he's a good character to have in the squad. So, yeah, I, I do like Newcastle. I do like a lot of what they do. And West Ham, same reason as you, really. I, I'm just struggling on this first weekend. So, I've gone 1-0. One 1-0 nil. One nil Newcastle. Okay, on to Sunday. Uh, a new, another newly promoted side, West Bromwich Albion, in action at home to Leicester, who obviously had such a good season last season, but ultimately missed out on the Champions League places. How do you see that one going, Matt? Yeah, it's a really, really interesting one, isn't it? You talk about West Brom, obviously they feel that they are a Premier League club and obviously have, have a lot of good experience at this level. Leicester, on the other hand, you know, we, we said it, didn't we, in a podcast we'd done just after uh, the football coming back that we'd be surprised if they dropped out because of the lead they had, but it was just so... Probably like Sheffield United, really, they were one of two free clubs that the break came at an awful time didn't because it allowed other clubs to recover and missing out I know they've got obviously Europa League football and and stuff like that but missing out top forward just so disappointing because they, obviously they've made some good signings and obviously spent a little bit of money but it's not not like being in the Champions League the finances that mm. brings is it and, and the glamour and stuff like that so yeah it'll be an interesting season for Leicester this season obviously got still got a fantastic squad obviously losing Chilwell is, is not ideal but they got a lot of money for him so He's still got players like Madison and stuff that were linked with moves away during certain stages. Yeah, and West Brom as well. So you'd be very interested to see how they get on this season. They need to consol- consolidate. I don't think at this level, don't they? They need to have a good, really, two, three seasons of uh, of sort of you know, 15, 16 play finishes and try and build from there. So uh, I don't expect West Brom to win this game. They've gone 2 1 Leicester. Yeah, again, I've gone away winning this one as well. 2 0 Leicester. I, th- I think um, I'm not too sure whether Leicester have actually improved this off season. So I don't know whether they can realistically plan on you know challenging for the Champions League again Vardy's another year older not that that stopped them last season of course um, and as you say they lost Chilwell which is a big loss to them but West Brom as well I don't think they've improved too much from Championship last season S- similar story to Fulham actually some of their biggest deals have been turning loan deals into permanent ones so um, I think they might struggle this season I've tipped them to go down West Brom and I can see them losing on the first day I've gone for less than 2-0 um, also on Sunday is Tottenham versus Everton. Everton done some very interesting business recently in the chance window. Hamas Rodriguez, obviously the standout one. Uh, Tottenham certainly improved under Jose Mourinho and they'll be really pushing for the top four again this season. So how do you see that one going? Yeah, like you mentioned, really, really interesting summer, isn't it, for Everton? I actually did like, obviously, Everton a lot of problems, but I did like certain things that they did. You know, Rich Allison and Calvert-Lewin, I think, are good players in the final third. And they needed that player, didn't they? Hamas Rodriguez, obviously, a lot to prove. You know, didn't play and player really hardly at all last season but obviously he's, he's a fantastic player and I think two other players obviously Decore from Watford very very good player obviously Arsenal have looked at him before Allen as well from Napoli who a lot of clubs have been linked with and, and Ancelotti has said you know he's a really fantastic midfielder and obviously mm. Ancelotti can can spot a player that's that's for sure so they look a lot more suddenly you know a lot more class a lot more solid in the middle of the park defensively can they See, Lucas Dean at the back is a player like an awful lot going forward, but defensively, not too sure. See, right back Coleman progressed a little bit, hasn't he, in terms of, you know, his his overall level. And you, know, you mentioned Tottenham, on the other hand. Their business has been strange as well. Obviously, getting Neuberg in from Southampton, you know, he might play in this game. An interesting one, he was so highly rated, wasn't he, as a youngster. Obviously, he, went to, he was at Southampton. Obviously, he didn't end fantastically there. Obviously, could Doherty play in this game as well. A good player for Wolves. So, uh, obviously, I don't think Joe Hart will play. Obviously, he's gone there as backup. But, um, yeah, really interesting game. And went back and forth on this one, to be honest, because we do fancy Tottenham at home. Obviously, with Kane, Ali, Son, Lucas. But but gone a draw in the end, you know, Everton. I do, I do like their summer business a lot. So, I've gone, I've gone 1-1 here. I was very close to going the same, but I changed it just before we came on. I've gone for 2-1 Tottenham in the end. Mm. Their, their biggest problem last season was their away form. Their home form was actually really good. Um, so I can see them kicking off with a win. But yeah, like you, I can see it being close. I wouldn't be surprised to see a draw in that one because Everton, they'll certainly be going into this season with a lot of optimism. Carlo Ancelotti, as you mentioned, is one of the best managers in world football, one of the most accomplished ones. So for him to bring in two players he knows really well, like Alan and Hamas yeah. Rodriguez, it can only be a good sign for Everton, I think. So... I think they might have a decent season, certainly top half, but I've gone for Tottenham to win this one 2-1. 
Um, there's two games on Monday evening, starting with Sheffield United versus Wolves, both teams that finished in the top half last season. Sheffield United, obviously, a fantastic season in their first campaign back in the Premier League. Easy to forget that it was only Wolves' second get, uh, season back in the Premier League because they, again, did really well, finishing seventh. Um, I, I, I do worry a little bit for Sheffield United. I don't see them going down this season, but I do see them suffering a bit of second season syndrome, to be honest, because... They haven't really added to their squad. They've lost Dean Henderson, brought in Aaron Ramsdale as a like-for-like replacement. But Aaron Ramsdale scored far more, uh, sorry, conceded far more goals than Henderson last season. Obviously behind a worse defence, so it'll be interesting to see how he does behind that Sheffield United defence. Um, and Sheffield United will always be hard to beat with the team they've got on with Chris Wilder in charge. But I, I don't see them, you know, they were pushing for Champions League places at, for at stages last season. Don't see them coming close to that this season. Um, Wolves, on the other hand, you'd back to, again, be pushing for European places. So I can see them being up there. I can see Wolves. I've gone for a lot of away wins in this first round of games. So I can see Wolves uh, picking up one here, one nil I've gone for. Yeah, I was I was leaning towards one nil at some point. I'm actually going to draw in the end. I, I don't be saying about Sheffield United. You know, like you say, if they were to finish 15th, 14th this season, I don't think it'd be the end of the world, would it? They, they mm. just need to stay in the league. You know, it's... He finished ninth last season. You gave him a little bit of criticism. We picking you know, Chris Wilder as the manager of the season. You said obviously wasn't that great. I know if you said it wasn't that great, but you said it's not the best thing a newly promoted cl- uh, team th- club has done, which is true. I thought they were fantastic, but teams will start working out how they play, wouldn't it? You know, with those three centre backs, the way they overlap, mm. you can get found out. And, and certain once you find out how a team plays and you know how they play, you can work a ways around. Obviously, there's so many great coaches in the Premier League now, and they analyse everything, don't they? they? Spend hours and hours watching film. So it's a tough season, I think, for Sheffield United. Wolves, and like you mentioned, people talk about Wolves and they finished seventh last season like it was a disappointment, wasn't it? But you know, can't, you need to to take that next step into the Champions League is very difficult, isn't it? Don't get me wrong. Mm. Wolves spend money and they've got some great players. You know, they're really good players, and obviously done a little bit of business this summer. So. Um, yeah, obviously, it looks like Troy will be staying as well because you know they're talking about over 60 million for him, and we've, we've obviously spoke about this before. And it's a lot of money, isn't it? For mm. he's not worth 60 million, is he, Troy? No, I don't think so. I think he's not at this stage. I think he has these games where he looks like a 60 million pound player plus, and he's just unstoppable. He had a couple against Man City last season where he looked like that, but you need to be doing that week in, week out, I think, to be a 60 million player. Yeah, so he looks like he'll be staying. Obviously, they'll be, they'll be great again. Only lost nine times last season. You think about United lost eight and Chelsea lost 12. That's, that's good. A similar story of Arsenal, though. Obviously, drew too many. 14, wasn't it? The same as Arsenal. So, they can mm. turn some of those into wins. But it works both ways. If you suddenly start going for games, they, they can suddenly become defeats and you drop down the table. So, it's a tight one. But, uh, yeah, 1-1 one, one here. 1-1 one, one for Matt in that one. OK, and the final game on Monday night is Brighton Hove Albion versus Chelsea. Um, Chelsea, the business they've done this summer looks incredible. I think they've strengthened hugely. Timo Werner started it all off. At, well, sorry, uh, Hakim Zayek started it all off a long yeah. time ago. And then Timo Werner came in. Two really good signings. Ben Chilwell um, improves their defence, as does Thiago Silva. He'll bring the experience and leadership and organisation they were sorely lacking last season. Kai Havertz comes with a massive reputation and by all accounts is you know the future of German football. So they'll be really excited with him. I think they've done business good enough to almost catapult themselves into title contention. And when you consider the last few seasons, it's been a two-horse race and the rest have been nothing, um, really. That's, that's, that's a huge gap to make up. I still think there may be, there's talk of Edouard Mende coming in from Rennes. If he's the top-class keeper they're looking for, um, other than Kepa, after Kepa had a really poor season last season, I'm not too sure about. And I think the top-class keeper is the main thing stopping them from really challenging Liverpool and Man City um, this season but I can see them having a really good campaign and I, th- I think this is a kind start to them Brighton they did well under Graham Potter last season they uh, they recorded I think their highest finish highest points tally um, and everything since the mid 80s in the top flight so they did well but were still battling against relegation I think they can expect a similar campaign this season um, Chelsea often start the season quite well they didn't last season obviously 4-0 lost to Man United on the opening day of memory serves um, but I can see them starting this season quite well. I've gone for a 3-0 win at uh, Chelsea. Yeah, also gone Chelsea. I've gone 2-0. I think obviously there's a few uh, fitness you know, doubts, isn't there? Obviously, Zayic might not play. Uh, he's got a little bit of a knee injury. Chilwell as well. There's a talk of mm. him potentially not playing. But, you know, it looks like Timo Werner will play. Havertz will play. You know, possibly Thiago Silva as well. So, a lot of, obviously, a lot of fantastic players coming into the team. You know, it's strange. Chelsea and Brighton actually played, didn't they, in the friendly the end of last month at the yeah. Amex. It was 1-1. Obviously, Werner scored his first goal. So, it's you know, it was almost like a dress rehearsal for that game. And 
actually brought and equalised late on. So it's weird that they're playing each other sort of almost back to back in terms of, you know, in the same stadium, the same. Obviously, it'll be a different set of circumstances. Yeah, Chelsea, the interesting one for me. I've been a little bit critical of them, you know, previously. Uh, I think there are a lot of issues to iron out. Could they still do with midfield? Is for me still a little bit unknown. Obviously, Jorginho's been linked with a move away. Kante's been linked with a move away. Is there. You know, a little bit uncertainty maybe what happened there. But yeah, the goalkeeping one's a big one, isn't it? If obviously, mm -hmm. you know, the rent the president has come out and said that, that they're in discussions, you know, no agreement yet, but but it looks like that will happen. Obviously, Kepa, nowhere near good enough um, in terms of, you know, being at this. People could compare him to sort of the hair in the early stages, but I think it is a little bit different because Kepa's obviously, he should be better than he is. He's not like he's, you know, 20 years old, 19 years old. He should be, you know, further along in his development at, at the age of 25 now. So, uh, yeah, very interesting game for me. Um, Chelsea as well, and I agree with you. I think they're. I still think they're maybe a little bit. Can they go and win the league this season? I don't know. I'd, I'd be a little bit. They could probably do a good challenge, but I still think they're maybe a, a touch short of winning the league. Obviously, bedding new players in, but it'll be very interesting to see. But yeah, Chelsea two 0 Chelsea two 0 Okay, so that rounds up our week one predictions for the new Premier League season. A quick recap of the the scoring system is five points for the correct scoreline, two points for the correct result. Um, so we'll be doing that all season. You can subscribe to us um, on the podcast and now on YouTube, of course, with these videos. Um, and also check out sportsmile.co.uk for the latest news, features and previews. We'll have previews for all of these games. We'll have, we've got season previews for every club in depth. Um, up on the site already. So please be sure to check in on them.